Welcome back everyone to today's tutorial and I am focusing on a very simple landscape using four colors. These four colors are from the company Deep Deep Light and I did do a video in my previous one. You can see the uh, link up above or in the description if you want to see more of their colors. I've chosen four today and the first color that I picked I use for the boat and the cabin and this is burnt sienna i love a very red orange orangey red <laughs> and maybe a hint of brown for my cabins that is my personal preference i love that shade now the next color is cedar teal and it's very dark on this paper and it gives off a bit of green but as it dries it kind of softens more to a blue it's very beautiful and i use that for the water now this is Natasha's gray and this gray I used for the sky it's very soft but you can build it up and make it quite dark and the last color that I used is my favorite color and it's forest green for obvious reasons it has forest in it <laughs> and two it's green but I use this color for the um, the greenery behind the house or the cabin so you can see these colors are granulating watercolors. They separate and they're just magic. I really have been enjoying with enjoying them quite a bit. Now for the two subjects, I did sketch it out. Usually I don't sketch anything out of my paintings. I just go for it. But if you're just starting out, it might be a good idea to sketch if you're going to put a subject in your landscape. That way you remember to keep it safe, keep, preserve the white, and I do that by using masking fluid, and I still do that today. I think it's a great way to make sure you don't go over it, and you know, you may not want to be careful and paint around it, so that's a great way to preserve whatever it is that's going to be maybe a focus in your painting that you don't want to paint over in those initial first layers. The first thing that I do after the masking fluid is I wet the whole paper. I'm using the wet on wet technique at the very beginning so the colors can flow and move around, keeping in mind using granulating watercolors. When you do use the wet on wet technique, you're going to get more of the effects with the granulation, which I personally really love. I understand granulating paints are not for everyone, but if you haven't tried them, don't knock them. I highly recommend giving them a go. Um, I have many from Daniel Smith watercolors from Deep Deep Light, and you can find them really in most paint uh, companies or brands. This is a very light sky, and I'm uh, doing a bit of a sweeping motion to kind of concentrate those clouds going towards the center. Uh, of course, to have a more realistic effect, you can have your clouds be much uh, longer and larger at the top of the paper and slowly gradually get thinner and smaller to kind of give it a little bit of that depth of field. Now for the water I did lay down the cedar teal and it's looking pretty green isn't it? <laughs> but it does not dry this green. It does go more into the blues and as you can see in the color swatch on the left and that's the color right below that burnt sienna. Um, and I think that's really fun. So these are definitely some fun paints, I will tell you that. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I just continue to build it up and I want to make the left hand side of the paper darker and then of course uh, quite dark um, for the shadows below the house and then where the mountain of trees that I build up behind the house. So that part of the water is just naturally going to be darker. And my paper is still wet here. I'm still building it up. And when you work wet on wet, you'll need to keep in mind that your, um, your paints, they're going to move more, of course, uh, because paint, the pigment's going to flow where the water is, but it's going to soften. So if you're worried and wondering why your paint or your painting is too light, if you're using the wet on wet technique, that is probably why. So what I like to do is you just continue to build it up. That's all you do. So the water is still wet. The sky is is I believe a bit more dry at this point um, at least the top 
or the lower part of the sky is drier because there's less paint on there. And you can see as I am working that paint over the house, this is why I like to use the masking fluid. I don't have to paint around it and worry, and then you have to worry about your paper drying and all of that. So um, if you just go right over it, not a problem. But because that top part of the paper is still wet, these trees are going to soften and feather out. And that is one of the brilliant um, parts of using wet on wet is that softening and having the paint move around. But if you're just um, new to watercolor and it's your first time, it will take some getting used to. Uh, so keep in mind that it, would, it will dry softer and lighter and it's going to spread more. So if you don't want so much spreading um, of the pigment, then you will need more pigment on your brush and less water on your brush. So I would keep that in mind. And you can see the pigment now is a bit darker and there's less water on it. So I'm giving a bit more of the defined trees um, here. And the trees that I'm doing, they're just sticks. And I have been loving that. It's very simple. It's very easy. Um, and I am all about uh, simple and easy, especially when it comes to filming videos. You know, um, they do take a lot of time, even these uh, simpler ones. And um, yeah, I want to keep it easy, trying to keep in the perspective that I do have a lot of you that are new to watercolor or landscapes. So, you know, having a beautiful overcomplicated painting might not be helpful <laughs> to anyone just starting. So trying to keep that in mind. Now I'm using a small palette knife here to create some rocks. And the way that I'm doing this is that the paint is still quite wet. And because there's a lot of pigment in this area of the painting, I'm able to um, move that paint around to create what looks more of these realistic watercolor rock effects. But of course, you can individually paint the rocks in. Um, it's up to you. Uh, you know, I definitely do that, but this is my preferred way. I absolutely love using the palette knife for everything. <laughs> I'm going back in with some more of that cedar teal under the boat as well, but fear not, it does not look this green. You can see that in the first layer of the water, it's already softened into a very moody bluish green. And I love that. That is the type of hues that I see in my own lakes around my area. And, you know, it just, you know, get inspired, I suppose, by what's around you. And this is what is around me. This is a very classic scene around me. So I love that. Very, very moody. So it's not quite moody these days. It's very sunny, very warm. Um, but I can dream about fall and winter because <laughs> I those are my favorite seasons. I just continue to build it up using this long round in a size 12. It's just the Aqua Elite. If you notice this brush, it's completely destroyed. It is frayed. It is it's not losing any of the bristles, so that's good, but it is my landscape brush. If you've been around a while, I've talked about this many times, that my landscape brushes are only for my landscapes because I destroy them, and that's just how I paint, but you know, paint how you want, but you can see all of that texture in the water, and I love that, and you can see as it dries, there's a little bit of like a purpley hue, which gives off almost like it's reflecting from the gray sky, and I think that is just pure magic, and I've only been able to get that um, from these pigments, unless of course you do that by using multiple pigment pigments, you know, from other brands, but that's, what's been so cool about these ones, but I get, it might not be for everyone. Granulating pigments are tricky and they're different. So, all right. I want to give a little bit of definition in the rocks and all I do is I just take the same color that I did for the rocks and I add the shadow underneath it. I also go in between the rocks to make it a bit darker there. Really you can explore and do you know what you want but I have found that that really makes those rocks 
pop. You can also go over it with um, some other colors if you want. I've definitely done that to have some more green on the rocks, or you can have yellow on the rocks. It's really up to you. So I just took a smaller brush. I have the Graby watercolor brushes, which I've used for years, and they are wonderful at getting in those nicks and crannies um, of your painting. And of course, I personally love using them for mountains to get that very um, uh, dry brush effect. And yeah, it's they've been really wonderful. So um, if you haven't checked these brushes out, but you, you don't need these brushes to create this landscape. <laughs> you don't need these paints to create this landscape or anything. The only thing I would suggest that you might need is good quality paper and this is the arches um, sketchbook and it's the cold press so it's 100 percent cotton watercolor paper and in my opinion it's the best paper at least for the landscapes and the paintings that i personally do yeah i haven't come across any other paper that has beat arches so you can see that the paint softened a little bit and i wanted wanted to add a bit more uh, depth so I did go in back in and add um, just stronger pigment on my brush and less water and I'm going in and individually putting in some pop of trees it's still uh, damp so I'm able to get by by not having to individually do each tree as far as the branches and I love that and I think, you know, the loose, the looser style of landscapes. Now, this is my version of loose landscapes. Let's keep that in mind. It's my version. <laughs> there are looser landscapes, but for me, it's more of the impression, knowing that those are rocks, that's a house, this is water, and those are clearly trees. <laughs> so that's all I really care about, I guess, when it comes to me doing some um, more looser style of landscapes. Now the painting has totally dried and I'm able to remove that first um, area where I applied the masking fluid. I'm building up my uh, uh, burnt sienna here and then I did add in a little bit of Natasha's gray. I don't remember why I did that. Um, I think I can't remember why I did that. <laughs> I think I wanted to make it a bit darker. Um, so anyway, uh, or I'm sorry, I put my brush in cedar teal. Natasha's gray is the very bottom right hand side one. So I'm just going over it and it's quite dark, very saturated, and it is too dark for me at this point. But I wanna get the paint down and then I will go ahead and lift some paint from the boat. So if you've never done the lifting te technique, all you need to do is once your paint is laid down on whatever um, subject you're doing or you know area you take your clean damp brush it doesn't have dripping water it's pretty damp and you're able to run that brush over the area that you want and it lifts the paint and I I love that technique it's one of the techniques I use all the time I use it for mist I use it for reflections I use it for tree trunks I use it in rocks I, you know, you can, it, the possibilities are endless, but it really brings life to your subject when you lift paint. Um, but it, of course, it's a personal preference, but I love such a strong color in the boats. And, you know, when I think of this boat, I think of the boats in those famous painting or famous photos um, of, I think it's Lake Louise, I want to say. Um, now, if you live in Canada or you've been to Lake Louise, then I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about. There's always that turquoise water, and then they have the contrasting color because it really makes for great photography. <laughs> so anyway, that's what my eye dries, uh, draws to. And because I wanted to keep the painting pretty simple and only four colors, you know, I knew I was going to do this for the house, and so I wanted to keep it the same. Now you can see I did add that highlight towards the bottom there, adding more of that cedar teal. Fear not, I know it's quite green, so, but it does um, soften. I feel like I need to keep repeating that. 
Um, but of course, you know, if you want some uh, green in your water, then that is completely accurate because you will find green in the water. Of course, if it's really murky, then it will be very green. But anyway, I have been so inspired by these paints and of course it's summertime and you know, what's more iconic, I guess, than a lake scene with a cabin and a boat. I feel like it's a very classic scene, um, you know. So anyway, yeah, just inspired by my area. Lots of people are out on their paddle boards and their, um, their canoes and just having a really wonderful uh, time. Not me. I'm here. I'm here painting. <laughs> um, maybe I will get out on a canoe. That would be, that would be lovely. I don't own a canoe though. So anyway. So you can see I'm just building it up. And I wanted to have the area in the bottom left-hand side darker, and then of course right below those rocks darker because that's where there's going to be shadows, and then it gets softer as it builds up to the horizon. I'm just removing the cabin area now. Now, I was happy with the cabin, um, but I do regret using the gray for the windows and the door. I wish I would have brought in um, a yellow just to warm it up a little bit to be a bit more inviting. Um, I felt that it was a bit too much of a contrast for me personally, but you know, I didn't know that until I did it. So um, you learn and um, you know, I'm always learning. Uh, you know, I may share these videos and give, give tips and um, you may or may not see me as an expert. I am just here to provide inspiration and to have fun and um, you know to just share the love of painting landscapes and specifically more moodier landscapes because that's my passion and I love lots of mood I love lots of texture and yes so hopefully you know you are enjoying these videos I also just noticed as I'm doing the voiceover for this video that the twinkle lights I have, that one up above, is um, you can see the camera picking up on the heat <laughs> from it and that is slightly annoying. <laughs> I am so sorry if that has been annoying to you. I am just now noticing it towards the end of the video. Um, I'm not sure why it's so strong on that particular light versus the other ones but anyway hopefully you haven't noticed and maybe now you notice and it's going to be the only thing that you focus on for the remainder of the video so i apologize for that anyway what are you gonna do um i will have to keep that in mind for for next next time because i'm sure that that might be um distracting for some viewers so i i totally hear that i get that um i'm finding it distracting myself <laughs> So for the, the cabin, I just used that um, burnt sienna and I made it a bit darker um, on the left-hand side and of course under the, um, the roof, just to give a bit of shadow. And I'm using some of Natasha's gray for the roof and I didn't want it to be so dark. So I'm adding a little bit of water to keep it light, to give some texture, again, the granulation is going to do the work for me. Um, and then I do make the little chimney quite, uh, quite pigmented or saturated to keep it on the darker side. But you can use a brown. Um, it's really up to you. You can use, you know, like um, yellows. Um, it's really up to you and how you want to do your cabin. I really love a red cabin, so I'm always going to be going for more of those red tones. And this is what I mean. I kind of wish I didn't do the gray here. It just feels a little bland now, and it would have been really nice to have a pop of um, yellow to give a bit of a glow. Now, I didn't show it, but I always use um, Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White and I'm going over the areas of the rocks where maybe the water is hitting it. And then of course, 
near the canoe and just giving a little bit of um, sparkling effect to show that there's movement in the in the water so um, yeah pretty simple I think anyone who is starting out can do this I feel like it's a very simple scene but of course let me know in the comments below whether you like the composition the techniques and yeah just talk to me in the description or in the comments and I will get back to you it takes me a minute but I do read every single one and I hope you enjoyed this video I hope that you've subscribed and stick around um, and I so look forward to seeing you in my next video but thank you everyone for spending your time with me I hope you got some value out of this um, even if it is just to pick up your paintbrush, then that's a win. <laughs> so, all right, my friends, I will see you in my next video. Take care. Bye.